Hello everyone, this is Aurin Namghosh, an assistant professor in the Department of English, Krishna Chandra College, Hetampur Birbhum, and I was teaching you Christina George University's Goblin Market, which is in your fourth semester CC10 syllabus. So in the previous video, uh, we have discussed uh, regarding the background, basic background of the Victorian literature uh, about the pre-Raphaelite brotherhood and we have also discussed the influence of the pre-Raphaelite brotherhood on C.G. Rossetti because uh, she was actually the sister of Dante Gabriel Rossetti. So in this particular lecture, I will introduce you to the uh, bi basic biographical information of Christina Georgina Rossetti and about the basic background information of Goblin Market. So, Christina Georgina Rossetti was born into an artistic, well-educated Italian-English family. Her father was a political exile, poet and translator. He was actually banished from Italy. He was an exile uh, because uh, of his radical nature of writing. And her maternal uncle, John Polidori was a writer and physician and remember John Polidori was a famous writer and physician to the famous romantic poet Lord Byron. The Rossetti household was intensely creative and artistic. It was an absolute volcanic combination of some of the great artists and writers and all the three of her siblings were writers and especially her brother Dante Gabriel helped found as we have discussed pre raphaelite Brotherhood, the famous secret society, one of the most influential artistic movements of the Victorian period. And although not an official member, Rossetti collaborated with the pre raphaelite Brotherhood, contributing poetry to their journal, The Journal, under the name uh, Alien uh, Alien. Alien Alien was the pen name of Christina Georgina Rossetti. And she was also uh, was a model for their paintings. So Rossetti grew more devoutly religious, choosing to remain single. She led a relatively restricted life, devoted to poetry, religion, and companionship with her mother and aunts. So uh, Rossetti never married throughout her life. We can uh, understand the perils and uh, various forms of crisis that she felt uh, during. Uh, in becoming an unmarried woman, a spinster in the Victorian time. Victorian period, we can really understand because it was a period, in that period, uh, no right of the property, no right to vote, no other forms of individual rights were granted to the women. So it was really challenging for a woman to remain single throughout her own life uh, in the Victorian period. This is a painting. Uh, of Christian Rossetti, portrayed by her brother Dante Gabriel Rossetti. Now let us move into the next slide. Uh, between this is a famous uh, photograph, uh, the, Ro the Rossetti family, for the first time clicked by Louise Carroll. We have already led, read Alice in Wonderland. Louise Carroll was a linguist, a mathematician, at the same time a great photographer. You have read. So this is the Rossetti family, clicked by Louise Carroll. Between 1859 and 1870, Rossetti volunteered with the Charge Penitentiary Movement, a famous religious movement in England, which offered a home religious instruction and training to the women who were formerly prostitutes. So, prostitutes were basically fallen women in Victorian age. So they were basically, according to the Victorian paradigm of morality, the prostitutes were basically fallen women. So this charge penitentiary movement actually offered home and all forms of religious instruction and training to the women, those who are so who were formerly prostitutes, so they can stand on their own feet. basic training, J movement a shang yukta chilo charge minute in free movement DH chilo and on tar influence in the goblin market dekhte paabo goblin market is a poem of two sisters Laura and Lizzie and uh, the allusion to the to the to the conception of the fallen women is also applicable to Laura I'm gonna bolti pari yama jakun poem ta korbo I'm gonna boost the paabo jikano hi 
ফলেন উইমেনের কনসেপ্টটা পতিতা নারীর যে আইডিয়াটা ভিক্টোরিয়ান পিরিয়ডে যেটা খুবই ফুলে ফেঁপে উঠেছিল সেটার আইডিয়াটা কেন এই গবলিন মার্কেটের কনটেক্সটে ইম্পর্টেন্ট অ্যান্ড দিস এক্সপিরিয়েন্স অফ আর ইন হেল্পিং দ্য প্রসিটিউটস অ্যান্ড আদার্স ইনফ্লুয়েন্সড হার থটস অ্যাবাউট ফল ইন উইমেন অ্যান্ড মে হ্যাভ ইনফ্লুয়েন্স গবলিন মার্কেট হুইচ পাবলিশড ইন এইটিন সিক্সটি টু সো ডিউরিং হার লাইফ টাইম রসেটি হ্যাড অ্যান এক্সেলেন্ট লিটারি রেপুটেশন in both US and UK where she was considered as a possible candidate for the poet laureate following Tennyson state in uh, 1892 so poet laureate uh, a very uh, prestigious post even she was one of the possible candidates of this uh, position of the poet laureate Rossetti died in 1894 and today she is recognized as one of the finest poets of the 19th century England So this was the basic biographical information of Christina Georgina Rossetti, 1830 to 1894, associated sometimes with uh, the movement of the Pre-Raphaelite Brotherhood. Uh, she was greatly associated with various religious activities like Church Pelerin Shredi movement, which helped her to understand the life of the fallen women and the Victorian notion of the fallen women. Uh, greatly influenced her poem, Goblin Market, Rossetti died in 1894. Her poem, Goblin Market and other poems, it's a collection. Uh, it's the first volume of poetry published uh, from Macmillan in 1862. And it contains a famous poem, Goblin Market and other poems like Afil, uh, The Convent Threshold and Maud Clare. It also includes another very interesting poem, In the Round Tower at Jhashi. 8 জুন এইটিন ফিফটি টাওয়ারে একটা ব্রিটিশ আর্মি অফিসারের যে লাইফের একটা অদ্ভুত মোমেন্ট সেটাই পোয়েমের মধ্যে ছিল ইন দিস পার্টিকুলার পোয়েম আ ব্রিটিশ আর্মি অফিসার টেক্স ইজ ওয়াইফস লাইফ অ্যান্ড ইজ ওন সো দ্যাট দে ডু নট হ্যাভ টু ফেস আ হরিফিক অ্যান্ড ডিজনারেবল ডেথ অ্যাট দ্য হ্যান্ডস অফ দ্য রেভেলিং সিপয়েজ কমেমোরেটিং দ্য জোখানবাগ ম্যাসাকার ইন ঝাঁসি সো দেখতেই পাচ্ছ যে আমি যার কথা বল বলি সবসময় কলোনিয়াল গেজ সামোয়ান্স টেরোরিস্ট ইজ সামোয়ান্স ফ্রিডম ফাইটার সো ইন দ্য আইজ অফ আ ব্রিটিশ রাইটার দ্য ব্রিটিশ অফিসার ইজ আ ভ্যালোরাইজড ইন্ডিভিজুয়াল তার কাছে এই ভারতীয়রা যারা ঝাঁসি আক্রমণ করেছে এবং ঝাঁসির টাওয়ারে এই ব্রিটিশ অফিসারকে মেরে ফেলবে কয়েকদিন বাদে তাদের কাছে তার চোখে কিন্তু এই ভারতীয়রা কিন্তু দেরা বেসিক্যালি টেরোরিস্ট যে কোনো মুহূর্তে তারা সন্ত্রাসবাদী তারা মেরে ফেলবে এর ফলে এই ডিজনারেবল ডেথের হাত থেকে রক্ষা পাওয়ার জন্য তারা নিজেদের নিজে থেকে শেষ করবে ফলে এই যে ইন্ডিয়াকে দেখা অ্যাজ আ নেশন অফ আনসিভিলাইজ পিপল অ্যাজ অ্যান ওরিয়েন্টাল এক্সটিকা এটা আমরা বিভিন্ন ভিক্টোরিয়ান টেক্সের মধ্যে দেখতে পাবো সো এই পার্টিকুলার পোয়েমটা ইন দ্য রাউন্ড টাওয়ার অ্যাট ঝাঁসি এইট জুন এইটিন ফিফটি সেভেন ওয়াজ কালেক্টেড ইন গবলিন মার্কেট অ্যান্ড আদার পোয়েমস This is uh, the front cover of Goblin Market and other poems, uh, painted by Christina Georgina Rossetti, published from London, Macmillan, Cambridge, uh, London and Cambridge, Macmillan and Company, 1862. The illustration, Laura and Lizzie, two sisters, and they are perhaps the goblins, the monstrous uh, fruit merchants, they are the goblins. And uh, this was painted by, the front cover was illustrated by Uh, of course, uh, the brother, Dante Gabriel Rossetti. So, uh, it was designed, uh, the, 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 the front piece was designed, uh, and the title page was designed by Dante Gabriel Rossetti uh, 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 in blue binding. And Christina was acknowledged that her brother's commercial savvy and artistic skill actually helped make her first volume of poetry a great success. প্রচার করা সেটাকে এবং সেটাকে কমার্সিয়ালি সাকসেসফুল করার পেছনে দান্তে গেব্রিয়েল রসেটির একটা বিরাট বড় ভূমিকা ছিল সেটা ক্রিস্টিনা জর্জিনা রসেটি স্বীকার করেছিল তার পোয়েমের মধ্যে সো হিয়ার উই আর অ্যাবাউট দ্য বেসিক ওভার ভিউ অফ দ্য পোয়েম সো দ্য পোয়েম ওয়াজ পাবলিশড ইন এইটিন সিক্সটি টু হোয়াট ইজ দ্য জনর অফ দ্য পোয়েম ইট ওয়াজ আ ন্যারেটিভ পোয়েম বেসিক্যালি ইট ওয়াজ আ ন্যারেটিভ পোয়েম Uh, and of course the, the the genre of the it also belongs to the genre of the fairy tales and fantasy uh, allegories are abound through the entire poem prochur ruboker rupok ebong symbol dutoi ei poem er moddhe khub bishon bhabe royeche and goblin market is narrated in the third person omniscient 
and the goblin market is narrated in the first person th- third person omniscient narration and of course it is narrated in a in the past sense so what is the significance of the term goblin market what is the significance of the title of goblin market it's basically is a reference to the marketplace that appears to the speaker at twilight the liminal or transitional period between the day and the night so it refers uh, to a particular market which occurs uh, at the twilight period a form of liminal space or transitional space or period between day and night it refers to that market a kind of uh, uh, unknown market a, a, a marketplace where the goblins goblins are the monsters are the mysterious creatures who sell their delicious foods unavailable anywhere else so uh, while reading the poetry we will discuss about who are the goblins what is the uh, uh, what is the significance of providing such form of enigmatic characteristics associating such enigmatic characteristics to the ga- goblins কেন পোয়েট গবলিনদের কীরকম মিস্টিরিয়াস ওয়েট ক্যারেক্টারাইজ করেছেন সেটা আমরা জিজ্ঞেস করবো বাট দ্য মার্কেট প্লেস ইজ ওয়ার দ্য গবলিনস সেল দেয়ার ডেলিশিয়াস ফুড অ্যান্ড দ্য মেডেন্স দোজ উর আন আনম্যারিড উইমেন হু স্যাম্পল দেয়ার ওয়ার্স ওয়েস্ট অ্যাওয়ে পাইনিং ফর দ্য এক্সটিক ফ্লেভার্স ইন দিস প্যাটিকুলার স্পেস দে অ্যাট্রাক দ্য মেডেন্স অ্যাট্রাক্ট দ্য স্পিনস্টার্স অ্যাট্রাক্ট দ্য আনম্যারিড উইমেন টু সেল দেয়ার ফ্রুট সো a hidden sexual overtone is uh, always pervading the entire poem a goblin the shonge a a spinster unmarried women their the interpersonal dynamics er kahini eta kintu ei poem er moddhe royeche ebong that is full of sexual imageries and sexual overtones so goblin market actually can also refer to the a marketplace where a women's body is objectified and commodified jekhane nari ke ponno hisebe byabohar kora hoy erokom ekta market er kothao ekhane bola hocche a goblin the through the mysterious monstrous fruit sellers are through the jeno bola hocche ei particular poem er context e so amra move kore jabo uh, towards the uh, next slide as i have said that uh, goblin market uh, it's a narrative poem by christina rossetti the poem basically tells the story of the two sisters who are they laura and lizzy who are tempted with the fruit by the goblin merchants and in a letter to the publisher rossetti herself claimed that the poem which is interpreted frequently as having features of remarkably sexual imagery is actually not meant meant for children many critics consider goblin market as a poem for children in many uh, in many uh, anthologies dedicated for children goblin market has been published but christian rossetti has herself said that the poem has many sexual overtones uh, sexual imageries and hence it cannot be uh, treated as a children's literature as i have already discussed with you texts like uh, for example gulliver's travels has generally been called generally been considered as a text dedicated for the children but it's actually full of virulent political satire political allusions to the political satire in the same way goblin market uh, also contains uh, various sexual imageries regarding the commodification and objectification of women so this is uh, the cover uh, and the front piece illustrated by again dante gabriel rossetti where we can see various animals they are basically the goblin fruit sellers and here we can see uh, the picture of perhaps this is uh, laura the women who got uh, who was tainted the sister who got tainted by uh, this goblin marchants so however uh, in public rossetti often stated that the poem was originally intended for children and went on to write many children's poems throughout her lifetime uh, but when the poem appeared in her first volume of poetry goblin market and other poems it was illustrated by her brother as i have already said and goblin market tells basically the adventures of the two close sisters laura and lizzy 
their encounter with the river goblins with the goblin fruit merchants now who are the goblins this is very important goblin is basically a monstrous creature from the european folklore first as attested in stories from the middle ages so they were basically a creature of the folklore that are basically fantasy but up kothar golpe e goblin ra thake they are ascribed various and conflicting abilities temperaments and appearances depending on the story and the country of origin but they are basically european monstrous creature originated from the european folklore you can see a a picture a painting an illustration of a goblin here and they are almost always small and grotesque onek khetre bete hoy jeno goblin der shonge onek shomoy dwarf er tulona kora hoy if you have seen uh, 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 the wonderful wizard of oz or hobbit cinemas like wonderful wizard of oz and hobbit we can see some of the representation of the dwarf like creature tader ki onek shomoy goblin bola hoy this is an illustration of goblin illustrated by john d batten collected from the english fairy tales of 19th century so they were represented as often small grotesque dwarf like creatures they are mischievous and outright malicious greedy lobhi hoy and especially for gold and the jewelry and especially for the women's body and they often have magical abilities similar to a fairy or demon similar creatures include brownies dwarfs uh, duendes gnomes imps and kobolds they are also synonymous with the word goblin now let us have a summary of the entire poem amra puro poem e ki ghotache seta ektu dekheni dekhini amra poem er exact textual detail e jabo so in the poem we will encounter the story of the two sisters they are laura and lizzy they seem to be quite young they live by themselves in a house which is quite mysterious that why uh, these two sisters only they alone live in a house this is very uh, exceptional in a victorian household in the Vic- victorian historical context because it is almost impossible for two women to live a a, a life of solitude uh, lonely in a single household uh, it's quite mysterious and they draw water every evening from a stream which is the setting of the poem which is a very important setting of the poem and it's the space where they will encounter the goblin shekhani jekhane jol tulte jay tara ekta stream er dhare tara goblin der ke encounter korbe prothom bha as the poem begins the sisters hear the calls of the goblin marchers the calls are very seductive very attractive dakche ai ai fall me be ai so uh, the goblin marchers selling their fantastic fruits exotic foods jigulo chot kore paoa jay na ekhane i have given you a color illustration of uh, the goblin market you can only don't fall like the bachcha and we have seen some of the animal uh, imagery is animal uh, personifications of the goblin men so these goblin merchants selling their uh, fantastic fruits in the twilight so on this evening laura intrigued by their strangeness lingers at the stream after her sister goes home so laura the the one uh, sister uh, the, the the sister the one sister in the pair of the laura and the lizzy she will fall prey in the hands of the goblin because she is the first woman who will uh, essentially uh, uh, will become attracted to the uh, fruit sellers and she in fit by their strangeness lingers at the stream after her sister goes home and rosity hints that the goblin men resemble the animals with faces like ombars or cats and with tails so this form of comparison with the goblin uh, food food merchants with the animals actually given some animal characteristic to them so jontu der shonge ei goblin fruit seller dike tulona seta kintu bar bari amra dekhte pabo ei particular poem er context e and longing for the goblin fruits but having no money the impulsive laura offers to pay a lock of her hair and a tear more rare than the pearl as we have seen that in the victorian period and also in the 18th century the lock up 
the lock or uh, the hair of the woman actually symbolizes the woman's uh, virginity and at the same time it symbolizes the woman's pride so lock symbolizes various layers of the meaning in the victorian era and a longing for the goblin fruits but having no money the impulsive laura will offer the lock and the tear more rare than the pearl and laura gorges on the delicious fruit in a sort of bacchic frenzy we know who is bacchus bacchus was the god of the wine uh, basically a roman god of wine and uh, uh, dionysian is actually the greek version of him uh, it symbolizes a form of intoxication a form of frenzy a madness and once finished she returns home in an ecstatic trance carrying one of the seeds and this form of carrying of the seeds actually symbolizes uh, when she returns home this ecstatic trance actually uh, symbolizes that she also becomes almost a fallen woman so at home lizy is full of wise upbraidings reminding lora of the jenny another girl who partook of the goblin fruits and then died at the beginning of the winter after a long and pathetic decline so jenny is another woman who actually uh, symbolizes a form of specimen or example to the uh, to the lizy as a woman who is fallen as a woman who dies a premature death jara oi goblin fruit kechilo je ebong tar mrittu ghoteche jenny and strangely enough the grass grows over jenny's grave so we can see a form of didacticism at a gandhi over vapar uh, women der ke shotorko kora jor kore je tader ekta boundary royeche she boundary er baire theke jate jara na jay tar je bar bar didactic fervor shela kintu poem er moddhe amra dekhte pacchi ebong laura and lizy are the basically two contrasting sisters laura is full of uh, uh, passion uh, don't know where to stop don't know her boundaries by lizy is full of wise upbraidings she knows a limit she jane she bar bar uh, 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 laura ke bolche instruction dicche bol dicche je jash na ekhane so ei contrast ta ei foiling ta kintu amra ei poem er moddhe dekhte pabo bar bar laura dismisses her sister oris and plans to return the next night to get more fruits for herself and lizy she jabe aro phol ante nijer jonno ebong lizy er jonno the sisters go to sleep in their fair bed the next day as laura and lizy go about their housework laura dreamily longs for the coming meeting with the goblins kemon kore meet korbe goblins der shonge seta kora ta shopne te bar bar asche and that evening however as she listens at the stream laura discovers for to her horror that although her sister can hear the goblins chants and cries she cannot she is not able to hear the Uh, the sounds of the goblins yes that she is not able to hear the sound of the goblins but her sister lizy can so unable to buy more of the forbidden fruit the lora seeks and finds for it while lizy actually returned home and as winter approaches she withers and ages unnaturally too weak to do her chores and one day she remembers the saved seed and plants it but nothing grows she actually plants the uh, 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 the seed of the some of the fruits of the goblins which they have collected which she have collected in the beginning of the poem but nothing grows out of that fruit kichu normal ho man spurs and lizy realizes that laura is wasting to day as the smriti udike jacche laura So Lizzie decides to do a sisterly self-sacrifice. Nije ke bikri kore ho, nije ke kono bhabe sacrifice kore ho, shetar sister ke baacha ho. So it's basically a tale of a, a universal sisterhood. Ek jon nariir paashe aur ek jon nariir dhana baar golpo goblin market. So Lizzie resolves to buy some of the goblin fruit for Laura, carrying a silver coin, a silver penny. Lizzie goes down to the brook. and is greeted warmly by the goblins at first but when they realize that she means to pay for with a mere silver and not with a gold and she will uh, keep a form of distance 
উইথ দ্য গবলিনস তাদের সঙ্গে একটা দূরত্ব রাখবে তাদের সঙ্গে মিশে যাবে না নিজেকে বিক্রি করে দেবে না কমার্শিয়ালাইজ করবে না অ্যান্ড টু গিভ দ্য ফ্রুটস টু আর সিস্টার এবং তারা সে সেই ফ্রুটটাকে নিয়ে তার সিস্টারকে দেবে দে বিগিন টু বিট দ্য গার্ল অ্যান্ড ট্রাইং টু ফিড হার ফ্রুটস বাই ফোর্স সো লিজি ইজ ড্রেঞ্জ টু দ্য জুজ ইন দ্য পালফ উই ক্যান ইজিলি রেকগনাইজ দ্য ফর্ম অফ সেক্সুয়াল হ্যারাসমেন্ট ইন দিস পার্টিকুলার সিন অ্যান্ড বাট কনজিউমস ন অফ ইট দ্য সেক্সুয়াল ওভার টোন ইজ অলওয়েজ দেয়ার ইন দিস পার্টিকুলার সিন a uh, sense of uh, se- uh, 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 always a tone of sexual harassment and molestation uh, is uh, pervading through the entire scene and lizzie escapes finally and runs to home but when the dying laura eats the pulp and juice from her body the taste actually repulses rather than satisfies her and she undergoes a terrifying paroxysm paroxysm means a form of nervous disorder where the entire body পাওয়ারফুল how powerful a sisterly love can be and how in it can overcome the patriarchal commercialization and commodification and objectification of the women's body tari golpo hocche a goblin market a golpo ta shesh hocche with the description of the lord and lizy both becoming mother uh, they uh, they have survived the onslaught of these monsters and they are left to tell the stories to their own daughters যে কেমনভাবেই পৃথিবীতে তোমাদেরকে বাঁচতে হবে খারাপ পুরুষ শাসিত সমাজে কিভাবে বাঁচতে হবে কেমন করে তোমাদের গল্পটাকে নেক্সট জেনারেশনকে বলে যেতে হবে তার কথা লড়া এবং লিজি বলে সো হিয়ার আর দ্য ইম্পর্টেন্ট ক্যারেক্টার্স অফ দ্য পোয়েম লড়া লিজি জেনি অ্যান্ড দ্য গবলিনস লড়া ইজ ওয়ান অফ দ্য টু সিস্টার্স হু ওয়াচ দ্য গবলিনস অ্যাট দ্য টোয়াইলাইট শি ইজ দ্য ওম্যান who becomes attracted to the goblins she stays longer to watch the goblins and falls prey to them she actually becomes the victim by lizzy uh, is a woman is a pair among the two sisters who watch the goblins at twilight but she flees from the temptation she is the one who wins the temptation jenny is the deceased girl in the story who dies prematurely and she watched the goblins and flay and, and fell prey to them resulting in her death while the goblins are the men who try to lure the girls with their forbidden fruit which when eaten causes them to wither and ultimately die so lorda falls prey to their seduction while lizzy resists it lizzy is the woman who resists this form of temptation while this form of seduction by lorda becomes a victim of it uh but uh but Uh, Laura falls prey to their seduction when Lizzy resists it, visiting them in the inn to save her sister. So Lizzy ultimately actually saves her sister. Various Christ-like imageries occur in describing the figure of the Lizzy. Now let us have a discussion on the important sources of the poem. Two potential sources of the goblin imagery that Rossetti employs in the poem are the fairies by William Allingham and Thomas Allingham. Uh, Knightley's, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Kately's uh, The Fairy Mythology. In The Fairy Mythology, Kately collects the tales from the various cultures, including Shakespeare's Midsummer Night's Dream. Uh, as we know that uh, in Shakespeare's Midsummer Night's Dream, the fairy Park and the fairy queen Titania, who tells her elves to feed him with apricots and dewberries, with purple grapes and green figs and mulberries. So the allusion to the fruits Uh, and the forceful consumption of the food uh, connected Rossetti's poem with uh, uh, Shakespeare's A Midsummer Night's Dream and the fairies by William Allingham also uh, includes a related imagery. The poem speaker says, We dare not go a-hunting for fear of little men, we folk, good folk, trooping all together, little men, suggesting the dwarfs or the goblins. Meter and the rhyme of the poem. a goblin market 
does not use a set of meter or rhyme. It doesn't use a specific meter or rhyme. The Victorian art critic John Rushkin he actually criticized this particular aspect of the poem that it doesn't have any uh, form of single set rhyme and meter, uh, uh, stating that Rossetti ought to exercise herself in the severest commonplace meter until she can write as the public like. So this choice is not, we think that this choice is not a weakness. However, Goblin Market is a narrative poem in experimental form and hence uh, uh, this is actually a poem which uh, devouts all form, which actually uh, rejects all forms of uh, norms and all forms of regulations and rules and hence we can say that uh, this poem which rejects all forms of normativity propounded by the patriarchal society uh, shouldn't follow any form of meter also. And uh, dactylic refers to that stressed syllable followed by two unstressed ones and trochaic refers to a stressed syllable followed by the one unstressed one. So uh, it's a combination of the dactylic and the trochaic we can see. Come by, come by, uh, apples and quinces, lemons and or oranges. This is a very musical poem though there is no set rhyme but uh, it's quite a musical poem. So another very important idea associated with this particular poem is the notion of the idea of the fallen women uh, which uh, occurred uh, which was a very uh, important idea uh, in the Victorian period. Now what is the idea of the fallen women? This notion of the idea of a fallen woman is a very important notion in the Victorian mindset in the Victorian times. Now according to the Victorian mindset, whether a woman was seduced, was raped, was molested, prostituted herself or choose to have a sexual relationship, open sexual relationship, then she was fallen. If she engaged in sexual activity outside of the institution of marriage, she is fallen. So this form of conventional and uh, primordial notion of uh, sexuality and marriage is generally uh, was very popular in the Victorian times and is generally associated with the conception of a fallen woman. So Potita Nari Shei Habe Je molested, seduced, raped, prostituted herself or engaged in some form of clandestine and extramarital love affair. Thus, she suffered a loss of the social standing. And of course, the modern readers will immediately note that responsibility for a woman's lack of virginity fell solely on the woman and not on the man who uh, molested her. So the responsibility of a woman's loss of virginity fall on the women. So this form of patriarchal idea regarding the fallen women was very much rampant in the Victorian times. And the activists who tried to help the fallen women employed various tactics such as providing pamphlets on morality and running homes such as the Mary Magdalene, also called the Highgate House, where women could live in a community and learn skills to help them earn a living. So the fallen women later were trained by uh, this form of uh, 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 houses, these forms of uh, 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 organizations and activists to help these fallen women to run their lives. So as Victoria Betts notes in her 2016 study, uh, the sexual forensics in Victorian and Edwardian England, age crime constant in the courts, that the accepted myth was that the pubescent and adult females were untrustworthy, unless absolutely chaste and flawless of character. So women, especially the pre-pubescent women and especially the adult female were generally being treated as untrustworthy uh, unless they are absolutely chaste. So this idea of the purity, uh, uh, societal purity, sexual purity has always been associated with the figure of the women in the Victorian period and hence this constant fear on the part of the Lizzie regarding Laura, that Laura will eventually end uh, uh, in having stamped herself as a fallen woman is always there. 
In Goblin Market, we can see that Lizzy remains pure, even when faced with temptation of the forbidden fruit and faced with the onslaught of the Goblin men trying to force to her fall. So the imagery is not subtle because various sexual imageries are there. White and golden Lizzy stood. White and golden are both the imageries that we generally associate with the purity. So stood like a lily in a flower. বর্ষার মধ্যে বা ডে বিরার বড় বন্যার মধ্যে লি মতো করে ফুটে রয়েছে ডুবে যায় লাইক এ রক অফ ব্লু ভেন স্টোন ল্যাস্ট বাই দ্য টাইডস অবস্ট্রেফিয়ার অবস্ট্রেফারাসলি লাইক এ বিকন লেফট অ্যালোন ইন এ হোরি রোরিং সি সেজ ইন কম্পেয়ার টু এ বিকন যে আলো দেখায় ল্যাম্প আর এ ফর্ম অফ লাইট হাউস ইন এ রোরিং সি অ্যান্ড আলটিমেটলি দ্য গবলিনস আর ওর্ন আউট বাই এর রেজিস্টেন্স So according to uh, DJ, according to uh, the Christian erosity, resistance on the part of the women in not becoming impure is very important. Uh, uh, I will call it, uh, as, it as a uh, preposterous notion because this notion of the purity, this notion of sexual purity is absolutely uh, a patriarchal construction. Purushtantra ke to hiri kore se hiri shuddha tabad je tumi কিভাবে নারী হলে বিশুদ্ধ হবে আর তুমি কিভাবে এই সোসাইটার ডিক্রাম ফলো না করলে বিশুদ্ধ হবে না তো এইরকমভাবে ফলেন উইমেনের আইডিয়া ক্রিয়েট করে একটা জেন্ডার স্টিরিওটাইপ ক্রিয়েট করে যে এই এই ক্যারেক্টারিস্টিক ফলো করলে একটা ওম্যান ওম্যান হবে এই এই ক্যারেক্টারিস্টিক ফলো করলে একটা ম্যান ম্যান হবে এই ফলস আর্টিফিশিয়াল নোশন অফ দ্য ম্যাসকিউনিটি অ্যান্ড ফেমিউনিটি ভিক্টোরিয়ান সোসাইটি ক্রিয়েট করেছে পেট্রিয়াটিকে বাঁচিয়ে So a lot of faults and lazy redeems are just as Rossetti sought to do for the women at the Highgate house. Rossetti also have done this form of uh, 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 societal activism for the Highgate house. She also uh, have done various forms of uh, philanthropical work for these fallen women. So we must understand the status of the women in the 19th century. Women were either governess, the, the educated women have options like becoming either a governess or a, 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 a teacher, a school teacher, or uh, she can lead uh, a life of a prostitute or she can be a housewife. So either she can be a caged bird or a slave or uh, can join in various form of low paid jobs. They were banned from the universities. There were no such colleges in England, uh, women were generally treated as a reproductive machine uh, in the mid-1850, uh, almost 30% women over 20 were unmarried and these spinsters were forced to emigrate uh, in various, uh, 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 various lands uh, in which they will eventually serve as evangelists. So marriage, hence for the women, become a very important option. Uh, without surrendering this form of marital institution, a women cannot survive, a women cannot thrive. And properties were inherited by their husband only and not by the women herself. So the status of the women in the 19th century uh, was essentially marginalized and almost subaltern in nature. So almost, why should I call it almost subaltern in nature? So women were not part of the mainstream society and hence uh, perhaps through this poem uh, Christian Rossetti is also criticizing the contemporary system. The women are not part of the mainstream society and hence perhaps through this poem Christian Rossetti is also criticizing the contemporary system. So this is not part of the mainstream society and hence perhaps through this poem গবলিন মার্কেটকে পড়তে পারি অ্যাজ আ টেক্স অ্যাজ অ্যাজ আ প্রোটো ফেমিনিস টেক্স প্রোটো ফেমিনিস টেক্স মিনস অ্যাজ আ অ্যাজ নট আ ফেমিনিস টেক্স নট আ প্রোটো ফেমিনিজম অ্যাকচুয়ালি রেফার্স টু দ্য ফেমিনিজম দ্য মুভমেন্ট অফ ফেমিনিজম বিফোর দ্য অফিসিয়াল অ্যাডভেন্ট অফ ফেমিনিজম ফেমিনিজম চালু হওয়ার আগে ফেমিনিজম আসার আগে যে ধরনের মুভমেন্ট পপুলারাইজ ছিল উইমেনদের রাইট নিয়ে যেখানে উইমেনদের সাবজুকেশনের কথা বলা হতো তাকে বলা হয় প্রোটো ফেমিনিস মুভমেন্ট তো এই প্রোটো ফেমিনিস্ট মুভমেন্টগুলোর কথা আমরা একটা অ্যাজ আ প্রোটো ফেমিনিস্টিক্স হিসেবে আমরা গবলিন মার্কেটকে 
ফিট করতে পারি অ্যাট দ্য সেম টাইম ইট অ্যাড্রেসেস ইম্পর্ট্যান্ট ইস্যুজ রিগার্ডিং উইমেন সেফটি সিকিউরিটি অ্যান্ড কমোডিফিকেশন অ্যান্ড অবজেক্টিফিকেশন অফ উইমেন সো ইন দ্য নেক্সট ক্লাস উই উইল ডাইরেক্টলি মুভ ইন টু দ্য টেক্সচুয়াল অ্যানালিসিস অফ দ্য এন্টায়ার পোয়েম অফ দ্য গবলিন মার্কেট সো ইন দিস পার্টিকুলার ক্লাস আই হ্যাভ ডিসকাস উইথ ইউ দ্য স্টেটাস অফ দ্য উইমেন ইন দ্য নাইনটিন সেঞ্চুরি ভিক্টোরিয়ান ইংল্যান্ড the idea of the fallen women the meter and rhyme of this particular poem the sources of the poem the characters of the poem and a short summary of the entire poem and i have also introduced you to the basic overview of the goblin market and uh, the basic biographical sketch of christina georgina rossetti so thank you see you in the next lecture where i will talk about the textual analysis of the goblin market Thank you.